Okay, good morning everybody. Today is January 11th, 2024, Thursday. And we've got a special um, Bible reading today. I mentioned yesterday that um, I may do a video about some of my visions, and so here I am. And we've got lots of Bible verses to go through with that, so I will try to make this as quick as I possibly can and try not to get too long-winded. Um, I began with a, you know a few minutes of that song at the beginning, hoping that it would give people time to get on, because I know some people uh, like to be on here at the live, but if you can't make it, then uh, obviously, welcome to the replay. <laughs> so, uh, leave me a comment to let me know you're here, if you have any thoughts or anything as we go through this, um, feel free to leave it there. And if this uh, video encourages you or blesses you in any way, then please feel free to share it. Uh, I will also be uploading it onto YouTube later. Um, that is my YouTube channel is A Mom Looking Up. <clears throat> um, I don't do much there, but videos like this I will upload there just to make it easier to share. Let's see, I've got something weird going on here. I'm on my laptop this morning instead of my phone, so I'm hoping everyone can hear me just fine. All right. So let's get started. Um, oh, good morning, Tracy. Oh, I'm glad it's beautiful there. It's beautiful here today, too. It's kind of cold, but it's winter, so it's supposed to be cold, you know? But, yeah, uh, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Let me clean my glasses real quick. Um, okay, so, um, I had been thinking for a while about organizing some of the visions the Lord has given me. I knew that he had something specific he was saying to me, and I thought that um, I would, you know, put it together into a video, and I was telling Pilgrim, and he told me I definitely needed to make one and to basically get on the ball to just start and let God do the rest, and so that's what I'm doing. Uh, <clears throat> first, I want to look at Romans chapter 8, verse 18. I'm sorry, I have to, to turn to that page real quick. My pages are wanting to stick together. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. This is the New Living Translation. I usually like to do New King James. Uh, for actual Bible memory and um, study, but I don't have that particular Bible in front of me, so I've got the New Living, Romans chapter 8, verse 18, <clears throat> and this is the theme of today's video. 
What we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Against its will, all creation was subjected to God's curse, but with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. For we know that all creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies he has promised us. We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently and confidently. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us. Um... You know what? I really don't know why I chose that. Because the verse I'm looking for, and perhaps you know where it is. I don't know why why I wrote that down. <laughs> because I know I looked at it last night. Uh, but the verse I'm looking for is that uh, basically says mind cannot... You know, um, our eyes have not seen and our minds cannot comprehend the glorious things that God has for us. And I'm not sure where that is. I know I looked at it last night when I was making my notes. But anyway, that's the verse I was wanting to read to you. And if you know where it is, please leave me a comment so that we all can know. And maybe the New Living Translation is written in a way that I just don't identify it. Yep. But anyway, <laughs> that's the verse I was going for there. And that's the whole theme of today's video is that um, we just can't even imagine the glorious things that await us in eternity when we are with Jesus in the place that he has gone to prepare for us uh, despite all of the difficult times now the Lord has given me a few visions that um, I think apply to this in that he's given them to me as a way of helping me to know that I need to focus on what's coming and focus on who I am um, I'm sorry uh, yes miss miss Linda you can call me whenever we're done here if you want to um, <clears throat> because we need to hold on to something How's the lighting on this? I'm seeing a glare. There. Is that better? Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm a little distracted by all of this. Let's, let's go to Colossians chapter 3. Uh, let's hope that I wrote this down correctly. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of the earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, 
you will share in all his glory. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it was, the sun. We are, I, I have no doubt we are in the end days. I mean, Paul even talked about his time being the end days, but um, we have every reason to believe that we truly are the final generation. And that means that we can see some very difficult times ahead. Some of us have already seen very difficult times. Uh, just living can bring with uh, can bring with it a lot of sorrow, heartache, anxiety, that sort of thing. Now we've already discussed about casting our burdens upon the Lord. We talked about that a couple of days ago, and I think the Lord has shown me these particular things. Uh, by way of telling me, okay, when things get tough and things are scary, think about this. Because I absolutely believe he was just giving me a glimpse of what can await us or what is awaiting us in eternity. And we must always trust if you belong to Jesus, if you've given your life to him, then you belong to him and Nothing that happens to you is going to take him by surprise. And yes, he, we, there's this thing called free will. And he will not violate people's free will. He has limited his own power in such a way that he gave us free will. And that's why bad things happen. That's why there's evil in the world and all of that. It's because people have free will. Um, but we also know and we are promised that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are trusting in him now I hope I am making some sense here because I feel this this glare here is kind of throwing me off uh, so I want to look at Philippians 4.8 it says, now, now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me, okay, that was just Paul there. But the point is, he wants us to think about things Focus our thoughts on things above. That does not mean that we don't live our lives. It doesn't mean we don't tend to our business, that we don't raise our families, we don't pay our bills, we don't go to work, we don't, you know, do stuff that we have to do. We are to be good stewards of what he's given to us here on earth. We are to occupy until he comes. We are to be serving him, working for him, doing our daily things. We don't just shut ourselves off and daydream. All right, but the point is, is that he wants us to keep in mind that there is more than what is here in this temporary physical world. Now, you're probably wondering, what are these visions I'm talking about? I have five here that I want to share with you, and they're all very brief and short. The first one, um, one day I was praying. And I, um, I was, the Lord was teaching me to hear. And I heard this sound. Um, it was a kind of a high-pitched, beautiful, beautiful sound. But it was like a ringing. But it wasn't like tinnitus or anything like that. But it was like this ringing sound, and it was beautiful, and I couldn't figure out what instrument it was. It wasn't quite a violin or anything like that. I couldn't figure out what it was. And so, I'm listening to it, and then he took me into a vision. And I saw what appeared to be a banquet hall. 
There were tables with white tablecloths. And on the tables were wine glasses. And I understood then that the sound I was hearing was the sound it makes when you... Um, okay. Is the sound it makes when you, like, dip your finger in water and you run it over the top of a crystal glass. You know how it'll make that sound? Well, that's what I was hearing. And then Jesus was there beside me. I didn't see him, but I knew he was there. And he said, everything here is alive with praise. So I, I know that I was seeing the banquet hall for the marriage supper of the Lamb. That is in our future if you belong to Jesus. And he told me that everything there is alive with praise. Now we know that when Jesus came in to, to Jerusalem that final time and people were saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Um that uh, the Pharisees, of course, fussed and said, tell these people to be quiet. And Jesus said, even if they are quiet, even the rocks and stones will cry out. Well, that is certainly happens in heaven. Everything is about praising God and the glory of God. And so he was showing me that, um, that it, you know, everything there is alive with praise. Even the wine glasses that we will be drinking out of. And yes, I think we will actually be eating and drinking something. And the Bible verse that goes along with this is Revelation chapter 19, verses 6 through 9. That's where we learn about the marriage supper. It says, Then I heard again what sounded like the shout of a vast crowd, or the roar of mighty ocean waves, or the crash of loud thunder. Praise the Lord, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice, and let us give honor to Him. For the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb, and His bride has prepared herself. She has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear, for the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. And the angel said to me, write this, Blessed are those who were invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And he added, These are true words that come from God. And then along with that, so we know we had, I saw the white tablecloth with the wine glasses that were singing. And that was, I don't know, remember when it was, I have it written down somewhere. That was like a couple years ago. Uh, when I maybe last year or the year before, but anyway, just a few weeks ago, I was laying in bed and actually I was trying to go to sleep, and all of a sudden I see I have this mental image. So let me explain. When I say I I had a vision, it is like just these random mental images that come into that come to me that are not provoked, have nothing to do with anything that I'm doing or that I'm thinking about or whatever. And when you, you know, when you do, when you get these sort of things or when you're talking with the Lord, you just know, okay? You just know. Your spirit confirms it within you. You know. So I'm laying there just trying to go to sleep. And I see a very simple image. There was... There were glass shelves. They could have been crystal, but they were, you know, to me, they looked like glass. Glass shelves, you know, stacked up on top of each other like a bookshelf. But all I could see were the shelves and white plates standing up on them. You know, the plates weren't lying down flat like they were stacked. They were standing up like they were being displayed. White plates on glass shelves and lit from behind so like somewhere behind the shelving behind the plates was just this pure white light it wasn't like a light bulb or or whatever it was almost like lightning is how it looked and it was just lighting this up and i understood that there's the plates okay i've been shown the 
the banquet tables, and I've heard the wine glasses, and now they're the plates. They are still on the shelves. They haven't been, the table hasn't been set yet completely. The, the plates aren't on the table yet, but they're there, and they're waiting. And, you know, that just seems so random, I know, but that's what I saw. And I think that he's giving me these images to remind me when things get tough, I'm to remember this. Because this isn't all there is, you know. This life isn't all there is. And so now we go to Psalm 91. I will not read all of this because I don't want to take up too much of your time. But we look at Psalm 91, which is the chapter I consider my chapter. I mean, I love them all, but uh, Psalm 91 is what got us through the um, that thing that came around in 2020 and shut the whole world down. That's what got us through it. Um, but Psalm 91, if you don't know it, go look it up. Read it. Let me get a drink. I'll read a little bit to you. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Uh, the focus here is those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. There are versions that, instead of saying those who live in the shelter of the Most High, it says those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And I believe that he has allowed me to see the secret place, or at least my secret place, my little corner of it. I don't know. But um, if you remember, I made a video a couple of weeks ago. It may have been a month ago now. I don't know. Um, about the Lord waking me up with the tree falling and, and stuff. And how in September of 2019... I was praying to, to to know about the Holy Spirit, to know the Holy Spirit, and he showed up in the room to me. And so ever, after that is when all of these, you know, I started having these visions. Before that time, I would have the occasional dream, but it was after the Holy Spirit came to me on the September of 2019 that the visions, I started having these while I was praying. Uh, and so, this was some time after that. He began, again, showing me a tree. And I thought, why do I keep seeing this tree? I'm a little dense, okay? I'm a little slow. It takes me a while to catch on that it's God talking. I mean, at least it, it did for a long time. It would take me a while to catch on. Okay, well, yeah. I'm about like Samuel when... <laughs> little Samuel when he was young and he kept hearing God call his name and he thought it was Eli the priest but anyway um I kept seeing this tree and finally I was like Lord why do I keep seeing a tree in my head you know this is in my mind but I'm, it's not me imagining things it's not me concocting this image it just shows up and um Um, and he was like, well, just look at it closer. And so I was able to see that it was a rounded type tree, kind of like a, um, a, uh, what do you call them? A poplar or something. And it had the, the green leaves. But then as I looked closer to the leaves behind the green leaves were golden leaves and the golden leaves were so thin and delicate and I really don't know what that tree's about but that's what I saw and over to the side the tree was like on the bank of this beautiful stream 
um, crystal clear water. And below the tree, on the other side, below the tree, is a white bench. And I, you know, it took me a while, but I began to understand that this is where God wants me to go when I pray. This is where I, He wants me to go when I talk to Him and spend time with Him. And I won't tell you, you know, things that were said there. They're more personal, but I'm so thankful I was allowed to see that. Um, I'm going to get emotional in a minute. And as time went on, I was allowed to see a field of flowers. It was like, you know, as time went on, we're talking about months here. Uh, it was like, am I going to see beyond this? You know, and I, it was like Jesus started just walking with me. And I began to see a field of flowers. It started off with uh, red tulips, just a field of red tulips. And then it turned into a field of lavender. And then it became tulips again, only they were yellow tulips. And then pink tulips. And it was like I was walking, and but it wasn't like I was walking from field to field to field. It was just like it was changing. And um, it, it, I just can't describe it, okay? I just can't describe it. And then I found myself on a bridge. And this is the vision I was telling Pilgrim, and he told me I had to tell it. Uh, I was standing on a bridge, and... Jesus was there with me, but again, I did not see him. I just knew he was there. And the sky was so blue. I can't, I don't even know how to identify the type of blue. It's, you know, not quite cobalt, not quite sapphire. Um, it's not exactly Kentucky blue those of you who live in Kentucky you know what I mean uh, but it was just so blue yet there was a gold mist not clouds but just like gold mist kind of dispersed throughout the blue and when I so I'm standing on this bridge and I see the blue and I look down and there's still the blue. There's no ground below me. It was like this bridge was just floating in the sky. Um, and so there's just nothing but this blue everywhere until I turned. And on the end of the bridge was a white castle. White marble. And I just understood that that was going to be mine. And... We know that in John chapter 14, Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, etc. And I think that was mine. I wasn't allowed to see inside of it. I guess it's not done yet. <laughs> but I just understood that's what it was. And I know, I mean, you all, I'm a reasonable person. I'm not crazy. I am a sound mind, but I'm sharing this not to get any type of attention or anything like that, because I'm nobody. I'm really, I'm just like a stay-at-home mom. I see it. And uh, I'm nobody special, but I think that he has allowed me to see it for my own comfort, for my own encouragement, but also to give it to you. To know that we need to be, when things get tough, when the storms come, we need to focus on Him. When the storms come, we need to focus on Him. And maybe these, I've given you some mental images now that you can hold on to. Or, what you should do, I think, is seek the Lord for yourself. And ask Him to open your eyes so that you can see these things. What He wants you to see. What 
what he knows will help you. Uh, this is done going on 30 minutes, and I appreciate anyone who may still be here. Uh, I appreciate you watching and listening. I hope I made some sense. I hope I didn't sound too chaotic and, you know, unorganized. But uh, have a blessed day, and let me know. Share with me what the Lord shares with you. You know, this channel, this video, these videos are meant for women. And we are to encourage one another. And I personally don't think we talk about the goodness of God or the miracles of God enough. And the Christian life really is like a supernatural life, you know. And we have the Holy Spirit of God Almighty dwelling within us and among us. And that's pretty special. And I, for one, like it when people say, this is what God showed me, or this is what I think God spoke to me, or whatever. We only see in part, we know in part, no, none of us have all the answers, and I don't think he's going to give any of us a full, clear picture of anything. But he is there, and he wants to help you. And he wants to give you encouragement. He wants to give you guidance and direction and wisdom. You just have to ask him. And then believe for it. Don't be like me and, and ask for something and then just question, think, well, was that, was that my own thoughts or was that really God? I'm really bad about that. But uh, we just need to trust him. Well, good. I'm glad he has, Miss Linda. Well, um, I, I'm going to go. If anybody else has anything else, you can leave it a comment here or send me a private message. And thank you for sticking in with me for almost 34 minutes. And if the Lord wills, we will be back tomorrow. And I'm going to figure out how to end this. Here we go. <laughs> See ya.